The year 2024 has been my biggest year in astrophotography yet. I reviewed more astronomy gear than ever before, taking pictures of a galaxy with a galaxy from another galaxy. I won an award for the first time in my life for one of my images, and I even got to see it featured in a book and a museum. And I also took astrophotography to a whole new level of wackiness as I opted to let darts thrown at a dartboard decide where I should point a colossal telescope. So as we start to look forward towards the year 2025 and the wonderful cosmic events that lie awaiting for us, the question remains, what telescope should you buy for 2025? Well, in today's video, I've compiled a variety of telescopes and services at a range of budgets stemming from $0 to $2,500. Let's find out which one suits you best. I'm Damon Scotting, and this is Astronomical. So the first two budgets are both less than $25 each, and this is for those of us who can't afford the space that a telescope takes up in our house, let alone the cost of it. Whilst I was trying to be a science teacher, I lived on the fourth floor of a block of apartments, meaning it was impossible for me to do any stargazing. And if the same goes for you and you still want a taste of the good life, if you want to take your own images of deep sky objects with powerful telescopes for free, then you can sign up for a free trial of itelescope.net. This is a fantastic remote observatory platform with lots of different telescopes available all across the world. Effectively, there will almost always be an available telescope for you to take pictures with due to the expanding reach of the telescope locations at your disposal. I would highly recommend signing up for their fantastic service. I don't get any commission for saying that, by the way. I've just spoken in detail with a lot of people who work over there at itelescope.net and know that they are a good group of people who really care about astrophotography and want you to have a good experience. Moving on up to $25, and we really are stepping up our imaging capabilities. With at least $25, you can sign up for a silver account with Telescope Live, another remote observatory platform that uses a much more simplified interface. With this silver membership and the complimentary credits that come with it, you can use the same telescope I used to capture my award-winning image of Messier Object 100. How cool is that? You have free reign over a telescope setup worth over $100,000. 20 credits won't get you too far, but it will get you several frames of whatever deep sky object your heart desires. Perhaps your credits would be better directed towards purchasing data from an extensive catalogue of pre-made observations. They have captured this data with the same telescopes, but offer this collection to members at a much cheaper price. This is what Telescope Live makes the majority of their income from. Their outrageously immense database of private observations. It's mind-blowing how much data there is to choose from. Also, I do have a partnership agreement with Telescope Live, which basically means if you click the link in my description, you will get a discount of 50% of your first first two months, so you could even decide to go for the gold plan and get more than double the number of credits for $29.50. Alright, now onto the physical telescopes. Stuff that you are going to own yourself and be able to hold and hopefully not break. I know it's 2025, but I'm still a big fan of the Newtonian Telescope. Even with all of the new fancy pants gear that I've been reviewing this last year, I still love the power of my 10 inch Celestron Newtonian Telescope. I bought this and a CG5 mount as well as a bunch of accessories for 550 British pounds. I did end up selling all of the spare bits and bobs for 202 pounds, meaning I got a telescope and a mount for a very cheap price. The views through it are amazing, a treat for visual astronomers. This scope is now almost 20 years old, I believe, but it is still so powerful. But if you don't like the idea of going used and want your own brand new telescope, then I'd recommend getting an eight inch Dobsonian. Also, to clear up the names a bit, these are both Newtonian telescopes. The name Dobsonian refers to the mount the telescope is attached to. This telescope cannot track the motion of the night sky, which means you're going to have to constantly keep moving it to keep up with the rotation of our planet. And when it comes to imaging deep sky objects like the North America Nebula, your chances are very low. So now, what if you want to be able to take jaw-dropping images of the night sky for under $500? Then you need to get one of the Seastar Smart Telescopes. Pound for pound, the best investment you can currently make in astrophotography. Its limitations? It doesn't have an eyepiece, so you can't look at the night sky yourself. Whereas the pros of this telescope are that it's an all-in-one portable astrophotography setup with a built-in battery, dew heater, light pollution filter, image stacking software, go-to and tracking capabilities, and yeah, loads more. The images speak for themselves. I just finished making a video on the newer, smaller model, the Seastar S30. These were the images that I managed to capture with the telescope with just a few taps of my finger on their mobile app. It's doing things that five years ago, amateur astronomers would have happily forked out more than $1,000 for. But miraculously, it's priced as low as $349. 
which is insane because it does everything. It is the perfect introductory telescope for astrophotography. It's simple, but very powerful, and you can create wonderful pieces of art with it. I've sung its praises plenty of times before, and I will continue to do so even more in the future. But as for now, if you are more interested, then click the link in the description to a playlist of my videos in which I talk about the telescope in further detail. Next up for $599, we have the Ascar 71F Quadruplet Flat Field Refractor Telescope. Well, I think this image that I captured of the North American Nebula with it speaks for itself. There were no filters used on this image, no auto guiding needed either, and yet it is beautiful. The telescope is great for both visual observing and astrophotography, with a full range of accessories included with it, such as eyepieces. The only issue that some people seem to have with the scope is that it was too slow with a focal ratio of f6.9, but now you can purchase a reducer for the scope and get this down to f5.1. This brand new telescope is arguably one of the most affordable and capable telescopes on the market, so going into 2025, it is certainly one of my top picks for telescopes under $1,000. However, staying with this budget for just another minute, I want to throw a curveball your way and suggest the elusive Skywatcher HAC 125. It is available in stores across the Far East, but as for Westerners, you are going to have less luck. I live in England and you can't buy it from any shops here in the UK, so I purchased mine from AliExpress and had it delivered from China. And wow, safe to say I was amazed by this telescope. It is incredibly fast. If you're interested in electronic assisted astrophotography, then this might be the perfect scope for you. It can record views like this. That's right, record which is unbelievable. It's only possible because of how fast a telescope is. If you want a similarly fast telescope, then your next cheapest option would be an eight inch Rasa, which is an outrageous jump in price, but it may be worth it since the Skywatcher HAC125 is so finicky. Achieving a perfect focus and collimation requires a lot of patience, but for well under $1,000 and capable of final images like this, it's certainly a top pick for 2025. It's got a whole host of limitations that don't make it a clear number one pick for the best telescope to buy, Despite its beginner pricing, it's going to require a bit more skill than a beginner level to understand how to properly utilize it. On the topic of learning new skills, I'd like to briefly talk about what today's sponsor, Skillshare, has to offer. Thanks to Skillshare, I'm not only becoming more knowledgeable, but far more efficient when I'm creating content. If you're not familiar with Skillshare, they are the largest online learning community for creatives, with thousands of classes covering everything from video editing and illustrations to productivity and entrepreneurship. I've been taking a class on advanced video editing and I've been really enjoying how it's designed by creatives for creatives. The platform lets me learn my own pace with short, on-demand lessons. It's a super hands-on, learn-by-doing approach that really helps the lesson stick. I would certainly recommend checking out their services, especially since there is currently a special offer. The first 500 people to click my link in the description below will get a one month free trial of Skillshare. So why not make the most of this explosive offer and unlock your creative potential? Now to finish the video off, I'm going to talk about telescopes in the more advanced budgets. As far as astrophotography goes, less than $1,000 for a telescope is to be considered affordable. So these final two are a bit beyond that, but with good reason. This is an image of the Andromeda Galaxy captured with the Starfield 115mm triplet refractor telescope. And it's meh, you know, whatever I guess. I'm kidding, this is the best image I've ever taken of the Andromeda Galaxy. I mean, look at that, is that not incredible? Now, views like this are not cheap. In fact, this recently released four and a half inch refractor telescope cost $2,100. Once again, you can purchase a reducer for this telescope or a one times field flattener to improve it even more. If you've been watching this channel much over the last six months, you'll have seen me using this telescope a lot. Its long focal length gives me the ability to take some beautiful deep shots like this one of the Crab Nebula. And lastly, to finish things off, the Asgar SQA 85. Wow. Available for a whopping $2,395. This pets full refractor telescope is producing pinpoint stars across the board. I've actually only just recently got my hands on a telescope and due to the recent storm that's engulfed the UK, I've had very limited time using it, but this really does feel like a premium telescope. I'm hoping to post a full length review video of the scope by the start of the year, but it is of course weather dependent. I'm sure you've seen plenty of other Astro YouTubers doing a review recently on the SQA 55 model, a strong competitor for the highly competitive Redcat 51 scope. The reason I've gone for the SQA85 is because I love to travel with my gear to locations where the sky is much clearer than my backyard. And in order to do so, it's not feasible to take my 10 inch Newtonian telescope with me. The SQA85 is powerful and portable. It comes with its own carry case, so I'll be happily taking it on board with me when I go abroad. 
So as for telescopes, I would recommend going into 2025. The SQA is the most expensive of the bunch. I've gone ahead and only recommended telescopes in this video that I myself have been able to review. All of the images captured in this video were captured from my own garden. So I'm hoping this helps to give you an insight as to what you can expect from your images with each of these scopes. I do love trying out new telescopes. So are there any that you think should have made this list, but didn't? What is your number one telescope recommendation for 2025? Let me know in the comments down below if you are a big fan of the Sea Star or perhaps the Asgar 71F. In fact, maybe you're a big fan of the volatile Skywatcher HAC125. Or perhaps you're a swashbuckling astrophotographer who goes big and stays home with the Starfield 115mm. Links to every single one of these telescopes can be found in the description below, as well as links to the remote observatory websites, Telescope Live and iTelescope. Thanks for watching and clear skies. I'm Damon Scotting, and this was Astronomical.